So when Apple unveiled iPadOS 16 at WWDC, and then finally at the very end showed a stage manager, all iPad users across the world probably thought to themselves, finally, the iPad is going to be a computer to not just myself, but to the rest of the masses. But it wasn't until after the keynote that Apple let us know that only M1 enabled iPads were going to have this new stage manager feature. And then that came with its own level of controversy. People were upset, especially those 2020 iPad Pro purchasers and users that just got there is probably like 18 months ago and thought to themselves, hey, I'm gonna be so future-proof moving forward, but even those 2020 iPad Pros, which are powerful enough in their own right, won't be able to use Stage Manager because they don't have an M1 chip in them. So in this video, I wanted to talk about which iPads are gonna be getting what version of iPadOS 16, because iPadOS 16 is gonna be coming to a lot of iPads, but which version will you be getting? Let's talk about it. So we all know that Apple is well known for supporting devices as far back as five to six years. So this list that I'm showing you right here shows you all the iPads that will be getting some version of iPadOS 16. And you can see that it's a long list. So any iPad Pro from 2015 and higher, you have the 10.5 inch and the 9.7 inch iPad. You also have the iPad Air third gen and higher, and then even the iPad fifth gen and higher. The iPad fifth gen is over five to six years old now, and it's still going to be getting iPadOS 16, which in a vacuum is an amazing thing. Even these older iPad devices are gonna be getting the latest software, not only from a user experience side, but also from a privacy experience side. And I've been using iPadOS 16 and the developer beta program for about two months now. So all the features that Apple announced, like the new weather application and the weather widget, the new features that came to iMessage, like being able to delete and edit and redo and unsend messages within those two minute time spans, being able to use that live text functionality inside of videos, not just still images. Also that background remover, which I think is one of the best features to come to iPadOS 16 and iOS 16. And then there's other smaller things like the new HomeKit application, which I absolutely love. And then also Apple is going to still be releasing something called Freeform, which is kind of this collaborative whiteboard space, which Apple still hasn't even put out in the beta program yet. So let's see when that does come out. But those are all things that no matter which iPad you have, as long as your iPad is supported on that list that I showed earlier, you're gonna be getting all these new features, all these new applications, which is great to see. But with that, this is the first time that Apple is segregating iPadOS 16 features and functions depending on which iPad you have. So let's talk about those things. Before we get into that big headlining feature of Stage Manager, let's first talk about those 2020 iPad Pros. So these two features or this one feature set is only gonna be available if you have a LiDAR scanner enabled iPad. So that includes the 2020 iPad Pro on the both 12.9 and 11 inch variants and then everything above that. So again, the 2021 M1 iPad Pros. So the LiDAR scanner was brought over to the iPad Pros in 2020 to allow us to have some sort of better and more accurate version of augmented reality in VR. So it's just a better way to detect your surroundings with that LiDAR scanner better than something just like a regular camera could do. So with that, inside of the Magnifier app, and if you guys aren't aware, the Magnifier is a separate application that's built directly into most iOS and iPadOS devices, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just another like window or viewfinder, kind of like the camera app, that allows you to zoom in and out to magnify two things. But in the Magnifier app, we now have door and people detection right there. So if you turn these on and you point your Magnifier at a door, it'll let you know like, hey, there's a door that's like six to eight feet away from you, just so you're aware. And this is all inside of the accessibility settings. So again, not for an everyday use or an everyday occurrence, probably most people won't be needing this, but for the people that do need this, this is a nice addition that was brought over with LiDAR capable devices. And I think this trickles down to the iPhones that have a LiDAR scanner as well. So again, if you don't have an iPad that has a LiDAR scanner, these features will not be available to you on your version of iPadOS 16. Then the next feature we're gonna talk about actually only refers to M1 capable iPads. So that is the M1 iPad Pro 11 inch, the M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch, and now the M1 iPad Air 5. And even this one, unless you have the 256 gigabyte version of the M1 iPad Air, if you, if you have the 64 gigabyte version, this does not apply to you. So now we have the memory swap capability. And for the most part, you won't really see the efficiency gains from this unless you have the 16 gigabyte version. You need a one terabyte SSD storage iPad Pro in order for this to function. So it's basically just a way for applications and third party developers to use more RAM when using those applications for better efficiency and better CPU and GPU performance. So again, a nice little addition, but not a lot of people will be taking advantage of this memory virtual swap. 
And then to keep on with the M1 specific features, that is Stage Manager. So again, you need to have an M1 capable iPad. So the 12.9 inch, 11 inch, or the Air 5, those are the only M1 iPads that are currently out on the market. And those are the only ones that will be able to use Stage Manager. So with Stage Manager, you do get the floating windows, the resizable windows, the overlapping windows, something called center window, which brings everything into focus. It doesn't go full screen if you don't want it to, but it goes right into the center of the screen, allowing you to really focus on that application. So Stage Manager allows you to do all of this. And with Stage Manager, all this can be done directly on the iPad itself. But if you do want to go to an external display, we finally don't have the letterboxing and the mirroring of the iPad. So now we have a true secondary monitor support for the M1 capable iPads. If you have a 2020 iPad Pro or an 8th gen iPad with iPad OS 16, if you plug into an external display, you're gonna be getting that same letterboxing on the right and left hand side and just mirroring your iPad display, which is very, very unfortunate, especially for those people that just bought an iPad in 2020 where they thought, hey, they were gonna future proof themselves. So Stage Manager will only work on the M1 capable iPads, same with secondary monitor support. So those are all things to keep in mind. And there's actually another feature that I do wanna bring up. I'm not 100% sure which one this is gonna be segregated to. I do believe it's for mini LED iPads, but it could be just for M1 iPads. And that is scaling the display. So being able to scale your display is been a godsend, especially with the M1 iPad Pro with the 12.9 inch one, because it allows you to use more real estate, even though the screen is exactly the same size. So it makes everything a little bit smaller, it makes it so more text fits inside of whatever you're viewing. So scaling it down to a minimum is a great thing to see, but I'm not 100% sure which one this falls under or if maybe every single iPad OS 16 iPad will be getting that. And then the very last feature that is coming to only one iPad, one variant of the iPad is reference mode. So reference mode is for people that are video editors, you know, creatives, you know, they use Photoshop a lot and they need to be able to use the power of that mini LED display, which is a liquid retina XDR display, which is only on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So if you have this iPad Pro, which I personally do, but I have never used this feature and I will probably never use this feature, it just gives you the most color accurate version of whatever you're working on. And you can use your iPad as a reference screen whenever you're editing something. So it's a cool little addition, but for 99.9% .9 of people, it's a feature that's not gonna matter. Even for somebody like myself who works with video every single day, is never gonna make use of reference mode because I edit on my iPad anyway, so I don't need to reference whatever I'm viewing on a secondary monitor to be able to get an accurate color representation of whatever I'm editing. But that is something that, again, is exclusive to one single version of the iPad, which is kind of weird to see. But that is pretty much the entire tiered process of iPadOS 16. So iPadOS 16, for the most part, is gonna be 95% the same across all of the iPads that you use. It's only once you start getting into the 2020 iPads with LiDAR scanners, then in the M1 iPads, like the M1 iPad Pro and iPad Air 5, that gives you that secondary monitor support, and that's the biggest one. Stage Manager is by far the best feature that's coming out for the iPad, and after you get past that learning curve, it is a very, very cool way to actually compute with your iPad, right? Being able to use a secondary monitor in the way that the iPad wants you to use it is very, very cool. And I think it could be the future moving forward. You just gotta give people a chance to really learn it, get used to it, and see that there are ways to optimize your workflow, even in this weird new floating window space that Apple created just for the iPad. But again, it's only coming to M1 powered iPads, which is a sad thing to see, because in my opinion, even though some of these other iPads like the A12X and the A12Z with that chipset that only has four or six gigs of RAM, it should be enough to have these floating windows with Stage Manager, but Apple has decided to segregate it to only M1 enabled iPads because it has the virtual memory swap and it has at least eight gigs of RAM. But that's gonna do it for this video. Leave some comments down below if which iPad you have. Are you upset by this fact? Do you think Apple is kind of just making excuses with what Stage Manager can be run on to again, get more money out of you because Again, that's what Apple is at the end of the day. They're a business that wants you to continually upgrade your iPad or your iDevice for whatever the case may be so they can continue to make money. But if you guys made it to the end of this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below as well so I know that you made it to the end. And if you guys are as excited as we are for the new iPhone release, click on one of these videos right here which should be talking about some leaks and rumors of what we should expect to see in Apple's September event. But until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here. Peace.